Hello everybody, welcome back to the channel. If you watched the video last week, you'll remember this little diorama we made based entirely on random generation from a dice roll. Well this week, we're going to paint it. Before we start though, I want to jump back to last week as I made a slight mistake. If you look at the chart we used, I could never have rolled Dark Angels. Excellent. But we also couldn't have ever rolled a bolter, so I will need to look at that and fix it. A good idea, perhaps poorly executed. Now back to our diorama. I'm going to paint it slightly differently to how I'd normally paint things. I'm going to go for a more abstract look. I want this scene to be at night and therefore have a lot of object source lighting. And I'm heavily inspired by Ninjon, who's got an awesome YouTube channel. You should check him out. These images are from his Instagram and this is Golden Demon level stuff. Quite literally, it was at Golden Demon. But as you can see, he's done light and darks and I want to replicate that, but you know, not spend hundreds of hours doing it like he did, because I don't have that patience and he's a better painter anyway. Exactly. <laughs> so for my bootleg version, I'm going to start by laying down a few highlights with a very simple method of dry brushing. I'm going to start with Panzer Grey as it's a nice dark grey, and I'm also going to use a makeup brush for this entire process. If you don't know, makeup brushes are the unsung heroes of the dry brushing world. They're cheap, they're simple, and if they break, you just go and buy some more. You can pick up a multi-pack on Amazon for cheap and it will cover everything from vehicles to little things like this. Perfect. I'm starting this process with an all over dry brush to make sure that everything has at least some definition. I'm then going to mix in a little bit of AK Silver Grey to this mixture, still heavily relying on that Panzer Grey initially. And then I'm going to move on to the next layer, again all over. This will give it an illusion of depth even at this early stage. Now we're doing all this dry brushing to begin with and not doing our normal base coating and layering because we want this to be, as I mentioned earlier, fairly abstract. So I'm going to be using the airbrush in a bit to tint the scene. I'm going to be using blues, reds, different spot colours to create object source lighting and also make the scene look like it's bathed in blue, much like those reference images you saw earlier. The next step of the dry brushing process was to use even more of that silver grey. Now I'm going to be focusing around the lenses and any areas that have light. This is going to not only make them look brighter, but also give me a reference area to work when I come in with the airbrush and layer paints in a bit. The keen-eyed amongst you may have noticed that I'm using small circular motions with the brush, at least for the most part. This allows a smoother coat to go on. I'm also not pushing the brush into the model, I'm keeping it fairly back and allowing it to be really light. This means there aren't going to be too many streaks. There's always going to be a couple, as is the way with dry brushing, but generally it's going to look decent. Using pure silver grey for the final dry brushing, we're going to now move on to airbrushing. Using an ink, in this case Prussian blue, we're going to create a nice nighttime effect. This is going to be over most of the model. I'm starting by putting it on our space marine as he's the one who wants to be bathed in shadow. Normally I wouldn't recommend making the focal point of your piece the darkest part, but in this case it adds to the story. As we said last week, he has to be a stealthy Iron Hand, as weird as that is, so he wants to be in the dark. So lighting him up would kind of be counter to what we're trying to get the scene to convey. Have no fear though, we are going to come back and add some definition and some cool lighting effects shortly. At this stage, we're basically leaving the drone and that entire side of the diorama alone, as I want that area to be bathed in a different colour, as if the drone is scanning with its targeting sensors and emitting a soft glow. This will add more contrast into this little composition we've created, and more colour is always a good thing. If I did everything blue, it would start to wash out and wouldn't look as good, so I'm leaving that space for pure red. Here we are after all the blue has been done, and now we can move on to the first stage of our object source lighting. Now using corn red, we're going to give a nice soft red glow across most of the drone, specifically around the lenses, and down a fair bit of the ruin structure. We're also going to add it to our iron hand in a few areas to tie the two models together thematically. You can go one of two ways with object source lighting. You can go completely over the top or you can go more understated and slightly more realistic. I've gone for more of the over the top method here as I thought more colour would be better and I stand by that choice. I also made sure that the base was slightly covered in the red to show that the drone was emitting a glow downwards too. The next airbrushing step was to use Evil Sun's Scarlet to brighten everything up and create more intensity towards the centre of the source lighting. Now, as always, it's worth mentioning that you don't have to use an airbrush here at all. I am because I own one. You can use a normal brush, like I'm about to demonstrate here, or you can continue dry brushing. 
Whatever gives you the result you're looking for and makes you happy with the tools that you have is the best method. Using the brush method, I'm adding Caliban Green, which is a darker green, all over the lenses on his chest. I'm focusing not only towards the centre of the lenses, but I'm also highlighting those sharp edges around them. This is more time consuming than using the airbrush, but it does give a more focused look, and I actually prefer it. The airbrush is just a lot more time efficient than this. Same as with the airbrush though, I'm moving up through different shades of green, moving towards my brightest highlight, which will be focused towards the centre of the lenses. With each layer, I'm leaving a bit of the previous paint showing, and we are going to go back to our reds and touch those up too, as shown here. I'm going back in with Evil Sun Scarlet, which was the original colour, and then adding some Wild Rider Red, and then moving on, jumping quite a bit of the way through the spectrum towards Luganoff Orange, which is a very, very bright, vibrant orange. I found that throughout this, with the base coats laid down by the airbrush, this was a really simple and easy process. It does require some brush control, but generally you can't go wrong as long as you don't slip. Also, if you noticed earlier when I did the airbrush stage, I went a bit too heavy on the helmet to the point he started looking like an ultramarine sergeant. So I went back with a wet brush and wicked most of that away. Didn't mention it at the time, but I thought it was worthwhile. Using these brighter colours to add some simple edge highlighting also really helps the effect, as edge highlighting is just the reflection of light. So of course, object source lighting will have some edge highlights associated with it. If you want to just use the airbrush or dry brushing as your main method, then you don't need to do the edge highlighting. It's not necessary for an amazing effect, but I think it adds a lot, so that's what I've done here. I really enjoyed highlighting this little building. It had some really good areas for edge highlighting and also took the airbrush really well. As mentioned previously, I then moved on to Luganoth Orange for the final highlight inside the red lenses. I wasn't sure if I'd made a slight mistake and this was too bright, but once the paint had dried slightly darker, it looked perfect. So trust the process. After I completed doing all the reds, I did the exact same thing with the greens using Livery Green. This is an ultra bright, almost neon green, and I recommend having one around even if you don't use it too much because it mixes brilliantly. Now to finish up, I actually went over an area I missed, which was the broken towel flamer on the floor that has the lightning claw marks through it. I used the exact same paints that we've spoken about before, but a slightly different method using entirely brushwork. With some thinned corn red, I stippled it around the area that I wanted to be glowing and then went in with those brighter highlights around the edges of the claw marks. Then I finished up inside the claw marks with my brightest highlight, making it look slightly molten and glowing. I really enjoyed this entire process. It was a really quick paint job, but I think it ended up being very effective and quite evocative of the scene I wanted to create. As mentioned in the previous video, I'm going to be giving this piece away to my channel members. So if you'd like to win this, then you can join my membership before, let's say the 15th of April. On the 15th, I will draw a winner. Anyway, I've been Sam, this has been another video, I hope you had a wonderful time, see you next time.